has it all kind of sunk in yet? You know, knowing, uh, you know, first state title basically kind of in for program history. No, not at all. I, I told, you know, I was with my seniors for the past two games, the North-South game, and I told them, I was like, I walk past the trophy every day, and I, I still don't believe that it happened. Um, so it's, it's been bittersweet, you know, not only for our team, but also for the community. Okay. And just talk about that. Now, when you just kind of came here and took over the program, you know, obviously this was the goal. I mean, what was just kind of the plan kind of coming in? What was just kind of the process like? Right. So um, I've been with the program for six years. Um, I came in, the seniors that just graduated, uh, they were my first group of seventh graders. Um, I started off as a stat manager, moved into the uh, assistant coach role under Kurt Mays, uh, and then obviously took over uh, when he passed. And um, I mean, it's really just been a team effort. You know, we've been working to build this program for the last couple of years. Um, coach Mays was instrumental, you know, in the development of the girls. You know, we've had, you know, multiple uh, playoff appearances. We went to the lower state championship last year. You know, we dropped that one to Bamberg. Um, but just focusing on, you know, the weak parts of our game. We've been strong defensively for a while, um, but we were lacking on the offensive side. So Coach Mays was a fantastic um, hitting coach. He taught me a ton about the offensive side of this game. Um, so, I mean, really just the, you know, the work of all the coaches past and present. And, you know, I have two assistant coaches, you know, Cliff Poston and John Rogers that I, I could not do without. Um, they're here every day, you know, working with the girls, making sure uh, we're, we get them, you know, set up the best that we can moving forward. It just seems like this year was the first year that, you know, we put it all together beginning to end. Uh, so it's been fantastic. Okay. So like I said, it's been kind of a building process. Uh, when did you really kind of start to see, you know, some of those, you know, some of those uh, corners, you know, being turned? When did you really kind of start to see the program, you know, really kind of start clicking those areas, basically? Right. I mean, this has just been a special season with a special group of girls. You know, we finished 21 and 5 on the season. Um, we started off hot. We went into that preseason tournament, the PD pitch off in Florence. Uh, we ended up going undefeated there for the two-day tournament and brought home that championship, uh, which was great momentum moving forward, but also showed the girls that they could compete at a high level uh, with a lot of the teams in that tournament being a higher classification than ours. Um, March, you know, we had some early struggles at the bat. We dropped our region opener to Latta, uh, you know, a big loss. But looking back, I think that even though it was early in the season, that was the turning point and kind of set the tone for the remainder of the season. Um, March, we just kind of rolled through the motions. You know, we weren't playing bad ball, but we weren't playing our ball either. You know, doing enough to get those wins in every day uh, and each week, but not producing the way we knew we could. Uh, and then all of a sudden in April, I mean, everything just kind of started clicking, you know, which has kind of been the MO for these girls. It takes us a minute to get started, uh, but last year, you know, we went undefeated in April. Uh, and this year, we played tough in April, end of the season with four losses, you know, placed us second in the region. Uh, you know, we forfeited that region title. Uh, but it actually put us in a really good spot, you know, moving forward into playoffs. You know, and even though we played really well in April, uh, the playoffs is when we showed what we could do. Uh, we played nine games. Uh, we ended up, you know, scoring like 84 runs while only giving up nine. Uh, so, you know, our bats got hot. Our defense was solid. Uh, you know, our pitchers, they've been pretty much lights out, you know, all season. I tell the girls all the time, y'all have a luxury that most teams don't have. You have two phenomenal pitchers. Uh, so it's just one of those scenarios where literally everything started working and, and everything got hot when we needed it to. Is there anything uh, just coaching-wise that, that y'all did just in terms of, you know, to try to get them, uh, you know, to that spot or right when the playoffs started to really kind of, you know, like I said, kind of make them turn that corner and you know, really have everything kind of clicking at the right time? Lots and lots of pitching machine. <laughs> uh, we brought out the hack, hack machine uh, and we just, cause, you know, we went from, you know, slow pitching to fast pitching, you know, you know, Louisville switched us up on it the first game. Nothing, we saw nothing but screw balls. Then the second game, we saw nothing but curve balls. Uh, so a ton of offensive work. Like I said, defensively, you know, we knew we were kind of where we were needed to be. Uh, coaching wise, I made some big changes from regular season to playoffs. You know, we switched some girls around. I changed my lineup up a little bit. Uh, just from what we've been seeing in practice, again, trying to set these girls up the best way we could moving forward. Uh, but the offensive piece was the piece that we focused on the most. How difficult is that kind of, like you said, mid-season is kind of, you know, change some things around where you know you've got to, uh, you know, regain some momentum and, you know, and kind of not get in that same, you know, habit of doing things over and over again. Like Absolutely. That. Uh, we, we tell the girls all the time, I think, you know, in that, that March area, we, we got complacent. Uh, and, you know, the switch up, even though if you had told me, you know, coach, you're going to switch up your entire lineup and your, you know, entire field for playoffs, I would have told you you were crazy. But it just, it was what we were seeing. I tell the girls all the time, y'all work too hard for me not to set you up the best way I can. Um, so, you know, yeah, you saw a whole new catcher, you saw a different outfield. Uh, I switched, you know, my five through my seven hitters, just again, just trying to set them up the best way I could. Who was hot then and, you know, who could be what I needed them to be where they were. 
All right, Coach, and then just kind of the last thing is, uh, as a former player too, kind of going through and kind of seeing everything, what's it been like kind of from your perspective to see it kind of from that end to now, uh, you know, going from kind of building the program and kind of that and then seeing it kind of get to this point, basically. Absolutely. Um, so I, I owe my high school coach, Jamie Cornwell, you know, all, all the props. You know, she was why I decided to be a teacher, why I decided to come back here. You know, I went to college and then I came straight back home. You know, I became a teacher at the middle school. Uh, I started in January 24th was my first day and I was on the softball field the next week at preseason. Um, so it means a lot to the girls because obviously they're the ones that want it. Uh, but for me and other Raiders, even not just softball players, but all the Raider athletes, uh, this is super sweet knowing we finally, we finally brought a title home. So on the way home, we were, you know, coming through Matt being, you know, the police escort and everything. I text my coach and I was like, this one was for you, coach. You know, it's, it's bittersweet to not only bring home the first ever state title, but to bring it home.